Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a very special knife consult for you. Before I bring out the knife that this video is about, I want to talk about a little bit about my channel. Uh, in the history of my channel, I have been very impressed and even obsessed with integral handled knives. What I mean by that is a folding knife that features a single piece of metal as the handle. As you can see here, all three of these knives, the Michael Raymond Starlet, the Peter Rosenti Nirvana, and the Peter Rosenti Small Satori right here, all feature the integral handle. This is something that's special to me and to a lot of the members of the community because it represents a very strong, sturdy, and rather complicated construction. And so you know that there is going to be that extra level of quality. We've seen also on my channel that there are some integral handled knives that are coming into the production world under $300. But as this starts to come out, I think it's important for us to take a step back and to understand the lineage that brought us the integral handled knife. Now I'm gonna call it integral because that's the way that Scott Cook calls his handle on the lock saw. So I'll go ahead and bring out the knife that this video is all about, the Scott Cook lock saw. This is the genesis, the original, the very first integral handled knife, uh, folding knife, and it has quite a story. This is one of the most difficult videos I've ever had to make because it took me, honestly, months to come up with the material to understand the history of these knives so that I could explain it in the correct way. To me, this feels almost like describing uh, a timeless piece of art and I didn't want to get it wrong. Uh, and so the Scott Cook Lock Saw is a very, very impressive knife. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and it is really a remarkable thing. It has been very difficult to find these knives. They are extremely rare. I wanna say that Scott opened his book sometime in the early 2000s. He got somewhere around a thousand people on his list and then he disappeared into a hole and he's been making the knives ever since and he's somewhere down the list. Uh, he, has, he has been generating these knives. I remember seeing a post on Instagram by Tashi Barusha who said that he had completely forgotten when he ordered his Scott Cook nine years before and it was finally showing up. That's how long it takes him to get these knives to his customers because this, this my friends, is a fully, truly, fully handmade integral handled knife and we're gonna learn a little bit about that. So Scott Cook uh, really was the person that started uh, the whole integral handled uh, craze. Mike Raymond is very closely related in a sense to the, the style of Scott Cook. Um, they w have worked together. Uh, Michael has studied from Scott and learned a lot and they work with each other and teach each other and talk to each other and uh, it's a very interesting dynamic that they have. Peter Rosenti actually, uh, in my conversation with Scott, I actually spoke to Scott on the phone so I could learn about this knife a little bit. Uh, Peter Rosenti learned how to make an integral folder from Gustavo Cicchini. Gustavo Cicchini was making integrals uh, many years before a lot of other folks. Gustavo had also asked permission from Mr. Cook in order to use his design right here. So understand that all of these people who are making these knives, all of them have a common, uh, common ancestor here and it is this knife. So we're gonna go ahead and move these other knives off the screen here so that we can focus on the lock saw. So the knife is spelled L-O-C-H-S-A, but it is pronounced lock saw, L as in L-O-C-K-S-A-W. And that is named after a river uh, where Mr. Cook lives somewhere in uh, Idaho there. And uh, I want you to take a look at this knife and I want you to see if it bears any resemblance to another very classic folding knife. In my estimation, this knife resembles somewhat the uh, Chris Reeve Sebenza model, and uh, that is probably not without some sort of a connection, and that is because Scott Cook started his career with uh, Chris Reeve knives. Back when Chris was running the company, back in the early 90s, he was getting things up and running, and uh, Scott was one of the people that was working there. He learned a lot about making knives and manufacturing them, and uh, he learned about tolerances and making things very precise 
And uh, he decided that he wanted to go and make his own knives, so he separated from Chris Reeve knives after a few years, and then he started making his own. Uh, and he makes these things, like I said before, 100% by hand. This is not made with a CNC machine. This is a block of titanium that he has carved with his own Bridgeport mill uh, into this shape that you see right here, along with a, a number of other hand finishing touches. And so that's what makes this knife extremely impressive. And so when you see these knives for sale, uh, when you, you can go and find them at some random uh, dealer websites, uh, sometimes these randomly come up on his website. I'll leave a link in the comments down below or in the uh, description down below with a link to his website. The prices that these fetch are insane. This particular model right here cost over $5,000. That's right. This is the single most expensive knife that I have had on this channel. And there is a good reason for it. Uh, and we will get into all the details of this knife. Uh, I have removed the 10 minute cap so we can go through all the details. This video was going is was always going to be very special and I wanted to include all the details on this very spectacular knife. So let's go ahead and get some vital signs on the lock saw before we start getting anywhere else. Up front is a very reasonably sized 3.75 inch blade. You could argue maybe it's 3.7, 3.8, somewhere around there, hand ground. Overall length, you're looking at about 8.25 to 8.3 inches right there. The handle is coming in at about 4.6, 4.7 inches with the effective grip area of about 4.3 inches right there. The uh, <coughs> handle at its widest point uh, this one is contoured heavily, but it's even at its widest point, this handle is coming in at 0.48, uh, so under half an inch, and the blade stock here is coming in at 122 thousandths. Uh, with this integral construction, sometimes the weight is a little bit higher, although this knife feels much lighter than you might imagine it to be. On my scale, it's reading at 4.25 ounces. That is a very good weight considering there's so much titanium here in the handle. Let's bring out another couple of knives for a size comparison. This is a big knife. It reminds me again, a lot of a Sabenza. I don't have a Sabenza here for a size comparison, unfortunately. What I do have are a couple of common knives. Here is a Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and then a Para 3. You can see it's about exactly the same size as the Paramilitary 2 right there. I've got a uh, special guest here visiting. Why don't I just bring this out for fun? We have a uh, Grimsmo Knives Norseman right here. Uh, I've got another interesting visitor that's also a very fancy knife right here is a Steve Skiff Accomplice, a three and a half inch knife right there. So you can see it's a little bit longer than the three and a half inch knives. Uh, and that's just like the Sabenza was about a 3.6 inch knife at the end of the day, just big enough to be a really useful size not so, and not too small. So I do like that. Speaking of the blade, let's go ahead and break this guy down anatomically and start with this insane blade right here. This is some Devon Thomas Damascus. Uh, I want to say it's got some kind of crazy name. Uh, let's see. I think I have the birth certificate over here, actually. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. Again, this is a Scott Cook Locks lock saw with a uh, three alloy blade, integral contour, tip up carry. I'm trying to see where did they have the description of the... Damascus because it's got a very interesting name. It's called like a twist fire. Here we go. Uh, fire clone. It's 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 uh, Mike Norris fire clone Damascus. I apologize about that, but this is a wicked wicked pattern. You can see how all the layers have been twisted up, forged together, bent, twisted, rolled. It just shows the hours and hours and hours that went into the development of this blade. A beautiful, beautiful etch done to it where it's all very dark. Very nicely done edge, very clean edge. This thing is incredibly sharp. I tested it only on some magazine paper just for fun. 
incredibly sharp, very useful drop point blade shape. Again, very reminiscent of the Sebenza, and I don't mean that in a negative way. This is clearly not a blatant copy of the Sebenza blade. It's very different in a lot of ways. It has a little bit of a ramp here. There's a flat area right here. The swedges are quite different, and I, I only mean it in the sense that it is a very classic and useful drop point blade shape. No nonsense, very useful blade shape, and I like that very much. It's also hollow ground. There's a top swedge here that leads out to a very fine tip. It is a fantastic, fantastic user shape. Obviously, this is more of an art knife, and this knife may never see heavy use, but certainly the more standard lock saws that come with S90V blades would be a very nice user indeed. So to open this knife, as maybe you have seen, are these very, very fancy looking thumb studs right here. Now, don't be fooled that uh, you, these might be brass or bronze or something. No, sir. As a matter of fact, these are gold thumb studs, actual gold. Again, I'm gonna bring out the, uh, the page here, 14 karat gold, double lugs. Absolutely incredible. 14 karat gold thumb studs. I have never seen that on a knife, gold on a knife like this. I've seen some inlays and things, but never a functional integration of gold on a knife. Absolutely incredible. Very, very cool. And you have to appreciate the angulation here. This is a very unique thing that Scott Cook has. Uh, for those of you that uh, with a keen eye and a familiarity with Michael Raymond's knives, he has a modification of this. Michael Raymond, uh, it's important to understand, came from basically Scott Cook's school of knife making, and he's sort of taken it to uh, the next level, the sort of uh, the modern era. But uh, we can get into that in the video about that knife. Uh, so back to the knife here, back to the pivot. This thing is running on phosphor bronze washers, as all the classic knives did at the time that this was coming out. This is a very reliable and smooth opening mechanism. This knife it has not seen any pocket carry and no use because it is not my knife. This belongs to a very, very generous viewer who has allowed me to have this knife for way too long. He goes by the name of Shy Timber on Instagram, so please give him a follow. He is a very good guy. Anchor, thank you, my friend, for being very patient with me. But finally, I, I found the words to make this video. Uh, again, it's running on <coughs> phosphor bronze washers for a very smooth action. If you are the, if you, if I were the owner of this knife and I was flicking it incessantly, this thing would smooth out just like a Sebenza, and you would be able to appreciate that super smooth action. Already, you feel the very smooth and very reliable opening and the bank vault like closure very very solid obviously no kind of blade play that would be crazy uh, very very smooth on the washers let's look at the pivot inlay right here there is a mother of pearl pivot inlay that's just insanely beautiful take a look at the stippling pattern that he's done and essentially let's move back here to the handle this beautifully done integral handle. I asked him on the phone, I said, Mr. Cook, how do you pronounce it? Is it integral or integral? Because I keep saying integral like it's something fancy, and he said, oh, it's integral. Uh, I never thought of it as anything else, so pie on my face. Anyways, <laughs> I've just been saying it that way because it sounds fancy, but the integral handle here has so many layers of finish work, I needed extra time to be able to explain it to you. So you see the mother of pearl, inlaid the, on the pivot. There are these amazing Timascus inlays, and then there is another mother of pearl inlay at the back here. Notice also now the stippling pattern, sort of random wild stippling. It uh, favors very well the, the uh, swooping patterns of the blade too, and the Damascus of the blade. I do like that. The three Timascus inlays are also contoured to the frame, you can see that uh, this frame has a nice contour right here, and these have been contoured to fit the frame, so very impressive work right there. You can see these spots have, these divots have been bronze anodized, likely heat anodized, more stippling on the back. Notice the satin finish across the front here. And then as you go up to the edges, you get a bead blasted finish, a more traditional clean bead blasted finish. Looks great uh, in this profile here with the blade. 
the uh, the sort of matte finish of the Damascus looks great with the matte finish here. And here it comes down to some of the small details. So again, I need to uh, explain to you that this knife, this in integral handle is completely made on a, on a manual mill. Uh, a lot of guys use CNC machines. Uh, Mike Raymond, I believe, is using uh, CNC and his technology there. Peter Rosenti, uh, I learned, m has somebody else machine his uh, frames. And uh, so it's interesting to me that this represents the truest form of hand work. In the same way that Jason Guthrie hand makes every bit of his knife right here with manual pieces, uh, I would say that this is quite the achievement to be doing that way. Uh, one block of titanium cut out by hand, just no, no CNC, just all by hand. Incredible, incredible work. And then all of the finishing touches obviously are done by hand as well. Uh, some of the small details that I've noticed here are the matching cutouts. The lock bar cutout is mirrored on the other side. It is done internally, which is extremely impressive. Again, he's doing this manually, so he doesn't have any fancy computers to be doing this for him. Uh, there is no steel lock bar insert, but that is not necessary in a properly done titanium frame lock. Notice also the hybrid 3D molded clip. Also very, very reminiscent of the style that Michael Raymond likes to do, hybrid clips. Again, see the lineage here. Understand that this is patient zero. This is Genesis right here. This is the beginning. Uh, and so I have just been very humbled and very grateful to have this knife on my table for far too long. Uh, it has taken me a very long time to build up the confidence to explain how special this knife is. The $300 we made integral knives that are coming out right now owe everything to this as, it's, as their progenitor. Uh, please understand when you see one of these knives why it costs so much money. It might look a little bit dull compared to some of the newer, flashier, integral handled knives. It may look like a Sabenza, but understand the lineage, where this came from, and I'm very happy to be able to bring this to you. Thank you so much to Scott Cook, who took time out of his day to talk to me on the phone and to explain to me everything that's going on with this knife. Check out his webpage. Check him out on Instagram. I think he goes by smcook150 or something like that. Uh, I'll provide that link down below as well. Go ahead and check out all these other integral handled knife guys, uh, Gustavo Cacchini, GTC, Mike Raymond, Peter Rosenti, all these guys make incredible knives, but they all owe it to Scott Cook. And so uh, if you're trying to get on his books, good luck. Uh, they are not open right now. And as I said, they can be as long as eight or nine years in terms of wait times. If he ever opens them again, he'll make some kind of an announcement. Uh, I do not have any plans to get one of these knives uh, because they are just very difficult to acquire. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, also, go and check out uh, my pal Svi, our French knife collector friend. He recently got a very fantastic looking lo uh, lock saw. So I'll provide a link to that video as well down below. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and click like and subscribe. Head over to Instagram and follow me there as Dr. Frunky. And as always, this is Dr. Frunky saying, take care.